When he deplaned in San Francisco, he was spat upon in the, uh, in the airport. It was horrible. They hated themselves. They were sad people. They, the only con uh, consolation they found was with their comrades. And the VFWs didn't want them when they came back. The American legions didn't want them. So they formed the Vietnam Veterans of America. These people are our heroes. They are our royalty in this country, not the government. Our soldiers who keep us free, who enable us to live our lives the way we live them and make the choices we make. And they fought and died for us. And now it's our turn to fight for them. John's father was the sports editor for the Patriot News and the Evening News for, I think, about 31 years. And John grew up, as he was growing up, his father always had big name coaches there in the house. And John was always around Joe Paterno, and I can't think of all the names right now, but he, he knew all of them. He would go to the games with his father and sit in the press box. And his father was well-liked and, and pretty popular guy, so he just wanted to be like him. He was a character in high school. Pulled a few pranks that got him in big trouble. <laughs> but he was, everybody loved him. Everybody loved him, especially the girls. <laughs> and um, he was on the championship basketball team of 1966 under Marino de Filippo. Then he went to Penn State. He got a basketball scholarship to Penn State and also to Notre Dame. And it was, he had been exposed to um, college life and it was all new to him and he was having too much fun and so he didn't make it. So he, there was a little bit of time in between and then he decided he was going to go in the army and he decided he was going to be an aviator if they, would, if they would think he was qualified to do that. He just aced aviation school. He was just a really good pilot. With Vietnam, you trained, you went you went to Vietnam on your own. You came back on your own, if you came back at all. They flew every day. Their run was eight hours a day. Sometimes they would double shift or they'd be out longer because they just were needed out there. Uh, one of the, one of the uh, phrases that they use is, uh, not until we have your wounded, meaning that, that come hell or high water, if their mission is to go to a specific spot to get wounded, that's what they're gonna do at risk of life and limb. And um, I think in the stories that, we, that we've heard, John was shot down twice, came back and kept going. He's credited with saving over 2,000 lives. And his fellow soldiers, when we've interviewed them in the past for the documentary, they said he was just fearless. They, they knew if they rode with him in his craft, they were coming back. Uh, he said that you know, one minute you're getting your ass shot off in, in a rice paddy, 24 hours later, you're in San Francisco airport. There's, there's no chance to debrief, there's no chance to, to just unwind from that, and you're, and you're still wearing the fatigues that you were, you know, fighting in. It's absolutely amazing. Well, he stayed in the Army, and he was with the EATS unit, uh, the training the Black Hawk pilots for years, and uh, he, he was at the Gap working for all those years. The VVA, um, they were kind of floundering until John came along. When John took over the chapter, he started fighting for, for their rights. He started giving them hope of, you know, having better lives. And it was, he was just a champion for them. He developed an Agent Orange-induced rare lymphoma. And the lymphoma caused an autoimmune reaction that degenerated his cerebellum, so he lost all motor control. He was devastated. It was absolutely devastating. He watched a lot of his comrades die, and then even since then, what happened to John, most people don't live more than two years after their cerebellum degenerates. And it's now been 12 and a half. A lot of John's uh, issues also developed into uh, PTSD. In our research for the film, these guys are, are fighting it. They're suppressing this, trying to get on with their lives. And with John, it was, it was through that diagnosis of the lymphoma and thinking that this is it, he's gonna die, yes. that kind of brought the PTSD on. When I went to the board and care and said, John, we're gonna make a film about you, his eyes just lit up. It's called All Were Forgotten, 
and then came John.